Hello and welcome to Void Electronics. In a previous video I managed to resurrect this oscilloscope. More specifically it had no trace due to a bad op amp in the power supply. Unfortunately after testing this scope I found some more issues. And it looks like the vertical attenuator for this one doesn't work. Every time we get to a multiple of 2 it doesn't work. Look, we are on 2 volts per division. 1 volt is ok. Let's reduce maybe the amplitude to something reasonable like, I don't know, 100 millivolts peak to peak. Point 0.5 is ok, probably. Yes, it is. Point 0.2 is dead. Point 0.1 is ok. 50 millivolts is ok. This one is probably dead. 10 millivolts is ok, and let's reduce the amplitude once again, 5 millivolts is ok. So every time we get to a multiple of 2 it doesn't work, which means that there is something wrong in the vertical attenuator. So basically how this works is that if you set the sensitivity to 5 millivolts, then you're going straight into the vertical preamp. So basically you bypass the attenuator. And this 5 millivolts per division is the native sensitivity of the circuit, if you will. And if you want to decrease the sensitivity by going to a higher number, you have to add some attenuation. For example, here on 10 millivolts per division, we have a times 2 attenuator in line. For 20 millivolts, we have a times 4 attenuator. For 50 millivolts, we have a times 10 attenuator and so on, 20, 40, 100. So to achieve these steps, we have some sort of drum with some cams on it or whatever you want to call them that enable and disable some switches. Here's a better look at that. And interestingly enough, all these steps are achieved using only four attenuators. This is a times two attenuator, times four, times 10 and times 100. So if you want times 2 attenuation, you just need to put this one in line. If you want times 4 attenuation, you put this one in line. Times 10 is this one, times 20 is this one and this one. So you have a times 2 and a times 10, which equals times 20. For times 40 attenuation, you need a times 4 and a times 10, and so on. And based on the sensitivities that don't work, my times 4 attenuator is blown. I already tried cleaning this up with some isopropyl alcohol. And by the way, keep in mind that these circuits are really sensitive, which means that not all cleaning substances are okay. So the manual says that you can only clean this up with isopropyl alcohol. And that's what I did, but it didn't help. As you can see, these golden fingers here are actually the switch contacts. And I was hoping that the alcohol would clean this up and it would work once again, but it didn't. Now these modules are socketed, so in order to confirm that this one is blown, my plan is to open up the second attenuator, this is for the second channel, and swap the modules, or maybe just put this one into the other channel, to see if the fault moves to the second channel. And if it does, this isolates the fault to this module here. So let's give this a try. Okay, we are in. And now let's carefully remove the attenuator. Yeah, this one is out. This is okay. So let's try to put the broken one in here. These are very delicate, so I'm very reluctant to do this, but I think this will help us isolate the fault. Okay, so let's power it up and see what happens. So let's give it a try. This is the second channel. Moment of truth. Wow, it works. 
this is weird so we didn't manage to find the fault this module is okay now oh, that's strange that means that there is something wrong with the switches in the in the other channel now I'm really confused because I see nothing wrong with the switches so let's check the signal path with the multimeter the missing attenuator is now engaged which means that we should have continuity between this pad here and this one which is one pin of the attenuator and we do now let's check the other one we should have continuity between this pin and this pad here and this one checks out fine so I don't get it the other ones I assume are just ground so yes they are which means that uh, in, in case it's missing ground the amplitude may be off but uh, in our case we get no signal so that's weird so the pins look a bit tarnished on the presumably bad attenuator so I cleaned them up with the finest sandpaper I could find which is maybe not a good idea but uh, I ran out of ideas so I don't know and I put it back so let's give it one more test and it still doesn't work so I don't get it as you can see it's dead this is on 0.2 volts per division okay so just when I thought it didn't make any sense I thought it would be interesting to compare this with the other channel and first of all I wanted to test for shorts because I thought that maybe we have some sort of short here because the modules themselves look okay so this means so this means that we have something wrong on the board and look at this we have the same settings on both channels let's test the good one first and I'm testing between ground and the pad of the attenuator that goes towards the input and of course we have an open circuit there is nothing at the input so let's do the same thing on the channel that doesn't work and we get a dead short so this is weird this is definitely not right and I'm not sure what's causing the short and I finally found the issue so this one is unbelievable and it's absolutely microscopic you almost cannot see it with the naked eye however I managed to see it with my phone so so I will show you a picture of this because it's really hard to to get on this camera the issue with this one is thin whiskers and I heard from them from Shango's videos but I never saw them in action so far so here's what they can do to you these ones cause the short here and actually I'm wondering if I can clear the short on camera let's see first of all let's ground the meter to the chassis and it looks like we have some thin whiskers between this nut and the pad that connects to the attenuator so here it is it's a dead short so one way to figure it out is to have a look at the resistance and in the case of this oscilloscope by the way when you perform this test uh, the input selector needs to be to DC because if you select ground then it shorts out the path to the input so it, in that case it's normal to have a short in there so I noticed that there is a resistance change between the ground setting and the DC setting and on the good channel of course on ground we have a dead short and on DC we have infinity but on this one we have two values that approximate a short circuit basically so let's see if we can clear this on camera I will try to use a sticky note for this and just drag it across the nut here not yet and that's it it's fixed using using a tool that you wouldn't expect which is a sticky note that's it we've cleared the short it should work now and now it's time to test it with a signal generator once again so look this wasn't working before we are on 20 millivolts per division working just fine 5 millivolts 10 20 
50, 100, 200. All the steps work. And I've tested both channels, of course. So that was it. Now, as a side note, if you decide to follow along at home, please don't use desk lamps like this one or expect some noise due to them. Look at this. So yeah, the vertical section is really sensitive without the shields. So that's it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more content related to electronics and programming, please subscribe to this channel because there is more content like this on the way. Also keep in mind that we have a Discord server, so if you feel like interacting with other people who are also interested in electronics and programming, feel free to join the Discord. You can find the link in the description of this video. That's it for now. Bye.